All right, what's happening, y'all? The official Washington football team regular season schedule has been released. Right now, I'm showing film of the burgundy and gold as I'm talking and as I'm giving the intro. You already know this is your boy Rico from Street Scores coming with a game by game prediction. Gonna give the overall win and losses prediction at the end. I mean, you'll be able to add it up as we go by game by game. And I will be showing film on the opponent that we're talking about as we go for each game. So right now, since this is just the intro, I'm showing the burgundy and gold. But as we go game by game, I'm gonna have that team's film on the screen as we're talking. Felt like just something unique. Y'all see my face pretty much almost every video I do. So I felt like with this one, I could show a little film on the opponents that we're going against as I'm talking about them, as I'm giving my wins or loss predictions. But yeah, man, enough of the intro. Let's get it. All right, so week one versus the Chargers. That is our debut game for the NFL regular season for 2021. I'm excited. First of all, it's going to be only the fourth time in NFL history that the defensive rookie of the year and the offensive rookie of the year face off week one in a regular season. So I'm excited about that matchup, first of all. But the true matchup is Rashawn Slater versus Chase Young. I mean, their offensive line versus our defensive line just in general but if you remember, Rashawn Slater at Northwestern probably caused Chase Young's worst game at Ohio State. I mean, Chase Young did not look good in that game. And I'm pretty sure Chase Young is ready to get revenge. First of all, just because, I mean, it's the same guy. He got to prove himself. He has to go out there and show that he can beat that guy after the guy got the best of him the previous time they met up back in college. But also, people are already talking trash on Twitter. Chargers fans are already posting clips of Rashawn Slater getting the best of Chase Young when they faced each other in college. And Chase Young already noticed and tweeted out the glasses emoji with the smile on it. So you know he's highly motivated to come out there week one and go crazy. We're already favored to win that game as well. And I do honestly feel like we win this game. I feel like, first of all, we start the season off with back-to-back -back home games. So with this Chargers game being in Landover, first of all, I expect this to go out there and ball out and win this game. The Chargers, I mean, they have a franchise quarterback at Justin Herbert. Definitely a great quarterback. They drafted very well. But they don't match up against us, honestly, in my opinion. I feel like our defense is going to be top three, arguably the best in the NFL. And then I feel like our offense is going to be way better than what it was last year. And we went 7-9 and nine with statistically the worst offense in the NFL. So if Ryan Fitzpatrick and this revamped receiving core and this improved offensive line, if they can just be average, and I'm assuming they're going to be at least slightly better than average, I'm thinking that we can run through a lot of these teams, and I feel like we start this season 1-0, definitely. Next up, we have the Giants Thursday Night Football, again in Landover, Maryland. We have back-to-back -back home games to start the season. Week 2, we play the Giants, and hey man, let me be completely honest with y'all. Out of every team in the NFC East, I feel like the Giants are going to give us the best matchup. First of all, Saquon Barkley comes back healthy. If he's able to stay healthy, he's going to be a problem. We cannot forget about Saquon Barkley. And you know, sadly for us, we're playing them week two. So this is going to be as healthy as he gets for the season. So we're going to have to face against Saquon Barkley. They just added Kadarius Toney to an already talented receiving core who they just added Kenny Galladay this offseason. Darius Slayton, Evan Ingram. Their offense is going to be pretty high powered. Their problems are injuries. Like with our weapons and our quarterback situation and everything and our offensive line, I'm not necessarily worried about injuries for them. They have a big concern for injuries as far as Kenny Galladay goes, as far as Adoree Jackson on the defensive end. Even Evan Ingram is banged up from time to time. So even though they have some high powered flyers out there, Saquon Barkley, Kenny Galladay, Adoree Jackson, Evan Ingram, can you be sure that they'll be healthy enough to be there for that game? Again, we're playing them week two, so I'm expecting them to be as fully powered as possible. So I'm expecting us to play them at their best, but I still expect us to get that win. I think we're definitely the superior team in the NFC East. We have the best defense, even though the Giants are right up there with us, but I think they have like a top 10 defense, maybe top eight. I think we have top three, arguably number one. 
and at the same time their weapons rival ours i think us the cowboys and the giants definitely have the better weapons of the nfc east but again the giants can they even stay healthy mainly saquon barkley and kenny galladay as far as the cowboys go i mean a lot of them were disappointed amari cooper had a down year and cd lamb was nowhere near as good as we all expected him to be coming out of college which really leaves us honestly even though we don't have everybody that's super proven i feel like we potentially have the best skill position group out of the entire division and with us having just so many edges i definitely see us taking this dub thursday night against the Giants in Landover, Maryland. Maybe if it were in New York, well, technically New Jersey, maybe I could think about giving the Giants that dub, but I honestly do feel like we'll start the season 2-0. Our defense is too stacked. Our offense is gonna be too explosive. We can argue and debate about efficiency, but we're going to have one of the most explosive offense just off of speed, off of having one of the most aggressive quarterbacks of all time. We're going to light up the scoreboard. We're also going to have a lot of turnovers, but again, we're going to have that top three defense is going to get the ball right back. And again, I think that we'll start the season off 2-0. Next up, we have the Buffalo Bills. We play them in Buffalo week three. And I think this is going to be a great matchup. This is two really good defenses going against each other. Two top eight defenses going against each other. I also feel like Ryan Fitzpatrick versus Josh Allen is going to be a fun matchup. I feel like anytime Ryan Fitzpatrick is going against another really good quarterback, quarterbacks that are especially better than him, I think it's going to be just a really good matchup. It's going to be very exciting. And I, I think, honestly, by the end of the season, they're going to start flexing us to later games, more primetime games, because Ryan Fitzpatrick is just going to show how exciting and fun this offense truly can be. But this Bills matchup is interesting because, remember, Ryan Fitzpatrick played for the Dolphins last year. And he only played against the Bills one game last year, but he completed 31 of his 47 passes. He had two touchdowns and no interceptions. He got sacked three times, though. But he had one of his highest passer ratings that season with a 100.3. If you're going by passer ratings, that was his fourth best game last season. And I feel like the weapons that he has around him now are even better than the ones he had last year. And I'm pretty sure even if we're 2-0 going into this game, we're going to be underdogs just off of how far the Buffalo Bills made it last season. But I do honestly see us having a great chance of winning this game. Again, our defense is better than the Bills. Even though they have Stephon Diggs and Cole Beasley, I feel like our receiving core overall is better than theirs. I mean, because Stephon Diggs and Terry McLaurin pretty much cancel each other out. I would take Curtis Samuel or Deami Brown over Cole Beasley. And then you still have the one that you didn't cancel out with Cole Beasley left over. And I would take Logan Thomas over any of their tight ends. I would take our offensive line over theirs. Really, their only true advantage is just Josh Allen. And maybe their secondary. But our defensive line, and now with Jamin Davis at our linebacker group, I'd take our defense over there as easily overall. Depending on like it, it, Tredavious White for zone coverage, William Jackson for man coverage. So for what our defense wants to do, I would take William Jackson over Tredavious White. But Tredavious White is easily a top seven, top five corner in this league. But that's just an interesting matchup. I mean, maybe when in doubt, I could give their secondary the edge for now. But I definitely think our secondary has the potential to be better than theirs. But still, at the end of the day, our defense is overall better than theirs. And then other than quarterback, our offense is better than theirs so i think we match up very well with them and i think this will be a very exciting game to watch great plays made by the defense and offense touchdowns interceptions i feel like we'll definitely be that defense that every time we go against an elite quarterback they're gonna have one of their worst games against us that they have all season we're gonna make a lot of these great quarterbacks look silly and i can see us making josh allen look a little bit sillier than he normally does he's still a great quarterback and i'm not expecting us to shut him down but i'm definitely expecting him along with a lot of these other elite quarterbacks we're going to play this season to have some of their worst games against us and i honestly do feel like we can win this game now it is at buffalo and i feel like there's just going to be some random games that we lose just off of inconsistent play and i feel like if there were a game there were a defense on this schedule that ryan fitzpatrick is going to have one of those ryan fitz tragic moments I definitely feel like it's against Buffalo, especially early in the season before he has a lot of chemistry with this receiving core and everything before Scott Turner is super in rhythm with his play calling with all of his new weapons and new personnel groupings. So I feel like the Buffalo Bills may catch us lacking a little bit with this week three. But I feel like if we played the Buffalo Bills, say week 15, 
I would give us the win, especially if it were in Landover. But it's at the Bills, and it's early in the season. They have more continuity going into this next season. We're changing quarterback. We added new receivers. Even defensive pieces, we added a bunch. So I think they may catch us lacking. And I have us starting off 2-1 and one going into week four. Week four in Atlanta. First of all, dub, dub. Y'all think I was going to let us lose to the team I hate the most in the NFL in my record prediction? Oh, no. Nah, I don't care what's going on. I don't care if Taylor Heineke's starting. I don't care if Logan Thomas is starting at quarterback. I have us beating the Falcons just off of pure hate. But honestly, applying logic to it, I think we match up very well for them. If you remember, Jamin Davis did the best job out of anybody to cover Kyle Pitts last season in college. I mean, including DBs like Patrick Sertan and all of them. Jamin Davis, you can say, held his own the best. So he may be a good Kyle Pitts eraser, maybe. Or at least he does the best job at it out of anybody that could possibly even try to do it out of this NFL. Because I think Kyle Pitts is going to be a one-on-one -on -one nightmare. You're going to have to figure out a way to double team him and things like that. Then you still got to worry about Julio and Calvin Ridley. So I'm expecting that offense to be crazy. I mean, they picked up Mike Davis. He's one of the most underrated running backs in the NFL from what he did with the Panthers last year. Trust me, I had him on my fantasy team the past two seasons. He's a dog. So the Falcons offense is going to be high powered, but their defense, whoo, we help them boys. They're going to be out there drowning. And again, I think our offense is just super high powered. I think this is going to be a high scoring game, even with us having potentially the best defense in the NFL. It's just not much you can do against a high powered offense that's built like the Falcons. Again, Julio Jones, Matt Ryan, Calvin Ridley, Kyle Pitts and Mike Davis. That is crazy right there. And an improving offensive line. Our offensive line is better, but their offensive line is improving. I don't expect it to be like 50-something to 40-something, but I do expect the Falcons, if anybody this season, to be one of like the top three teams that puts the most points on us. I'm not expecting them to score 40, but even as great as our defense is, it's just so much you can do with the weapons that the Falcons have. And again, I still expect us to win this game, but I expect this to be one of those games where our defense probably struggles the most. Even if struggling the most is still a good game, I'm expecting them to have one of their least dominant games this game. I'm expecting us to get a lot of turnovers. I'm expecting us to pick off Matt Ryan, get sacks, get fumbles cause a lot of turnovers but I think ultimately the Falcons will still be able to move the ball quite a bit maybe even get off an explosive play or two and Kyle Pitts is going to be a nightmare to cover I mean I, I expect them to convert some really annoying third downs I think overall our defense is going to be way better on third downs than it's been the past few years I think we're finally going to have a true third down shutdown defense but this, this Falcons team, like I keep saying, is too high-powered, and I hate them. Like I said, I hate this team more than any other. And, and then the fact that it's in Atlanta, I might go to the game. I'm only about 10, 15 minutes away from the stadium, so I might have to pull up, and I'm going to be yelling and screaming as loud as possible, being as obnoxious as possible. If I do go to that game, meet up with some of y'all if y'all end up pulling up. We're going to have to schedule something. But yeah, man, I can't let the Falcons go out there and beat my burgundy and gold in my home territory granted it's theirs as well but it's my home territory me i mean when in doubt if the game's too close i might run out on the field and tackle matt ryan myself i cannot let my burgundy and gold go out like that in atlanta i'm sorry so i have us taking this dub and starting this season three and one headed to week five headed into week five we play the saints in landover maryland and I'm showing Taysom Hill highlights, even though I feel like Jameis Winston will be the starter, but he just didn't play enough to have any highlights to really show while I'm talking. So this is Taysom Hill, but, and not Drew Brees, cause Drew Brees is retired and at least Taysom Hill will be on the team. So that's why I'm showing his highlights, but this is gonna be a really tough matchup. That defense is stacked. They were the ones that re-signed Marcus Williams, even though I know a lot of us in Burgundy and Gold Nation wanted to get him. Well, they franchise tagged him, so. He may be a free agent next year. Again, they may just let him go. I don't know. But that has nothing to do with this game right now. Their defense is still stacked. Their offense has some high-powered weapons on it. If Michael Thomas can stay healthy, if Alvin Kamara can be more consistent, they still have some weapons. But I think our defense is better than theirs. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick with the weapons we have is going to outperform Taysom Hill or Jameis Winston with the weapons that they have, honestly. The offensive line is really good still but again i think just overall our offense is going to be more high powered better than theirs maybe if it were the drew Brees from three years ago maybe i would probably get us to new orleans but with Jameis winston and Taysom hill at quarterback 
I can see us getting a lot of turnovers off of Jameis Winston. And this defense, if any in the NFL, is the best built to stop mobile quarterbacks like a Taysom Hill. So no matter who they throw at us, we're going to be able to shut them down. I, I can see William Jackson shutting down Michael Thomas or at least, you know, suppressing them. It's really hard to just completely shut down a receiver that good. But I definitely see William Jackson causing Michael Thomas to have one of his worst games of the season. And then this defense is just going to eat overall. And I think that their defense is stacked as well. But I think our offense can do better against their defense than their offense can do against ours. I see us taking this dub and going into week six, four and one, honestly. Then week six, we play versus the Kansas City Chiefs at home in Landover, Maryland. And I, I think this is where we end up taking a loss, y'all. I think we end up starting the year four and two. So far, I see the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs as our only losses. And the Kansas City Chiefs is just the Kansas City Chiefs. When they're on, they're super on. They're fairly inconsistent. They'll lose games they shouldn't. But when the Kansas City Chiefs are firing on all cylinders, and then especially with how they revamped their offensive line, they're going from a pretty good offensive line. And then after the injuries, once they got to the Super Bowl, it was one of the worst with all of the backups they had to play. And now going into this next season, they may have a top five offensive line, honestly. I mean, their offensive line is stacked. And they're going to be able to protect Pat Mahomes. Now, granted, again, the theme of this entire schedule, the theme of this entire franchise is that if there is a team that can eat up against this offensive line, it's this one because of this defensive line. But I still see us taking an L that game. The Kansas City Chiefs, again, when they're on, they're on. And I just predict them to be on this game. I don't predict us to go 16-0. and 0, So I'm going to have to find some L's in this schedule somewhere, even though I do feel like we match up better against a lot of our opponents than most people feel like we will. And if I just have to find some L's, I definitely can easily pick the Kansas City Chiefs as an easy one. And But I can see us playing against them very well and earning some respect even in a loss. And I wouldn't be totally surprised like most of the nation would be if we ended up beating them. But I'm going to go ahead and hand us this L right here. Not too much to analyze. I mean, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, revamped the offensive line. Pat Mahomes, our defense is way better than theirs, even though they do have the Honey Badger and Chris Jones. Overall, our defense is way better than theirs. But still, Pat Mahomes is just Pat Mahomes, man. He's just going to have those games where it doesn't matter what defense you throw at him. He's going to go for 400. I don't predict them to go for 400. Again, one of those themes throughout this entire schedule. I'm predicting him to have one of his least dominant games of the season against us, but I still see us taking this L. And going into week seven, four and two. Now going into week seven, four and two, playing our future quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, it would be nice if we could trade for him before this game happens. But I mean, I, doubt, I doubt we're gonna trade for him at all, but you know, it's just funny to talk about. But either way, we're going against Green Bay in Green Bay. And I can definitely see Aaron Rodgers and those weapons catching us off guard for a game. Our defense is way better than theirs. If it weren't for Aaron Rodgers, our offense would be better than theirs as well. But Aaron Rodgers and Pat Mahomes just have these it factors to where if they're at their best, they're pretty much unstoppable. And again, I don't see us going 16-0. So I have to find some L's in here somewhere. And I have us getting a lot of dubs towards the end of the season. And I think Green Bay is going to be one of our tougher matchups again, just because Aaron Rodgers is so elite. He's still playing at a near MVP level. Last season, he went crazy. And again, the theme of this schedule, the theme of this franchise, I see us forcing Aaron Rodgers into having one of his least dominant games of the season. But I still see them edging us out in this game because again, I don't see us going 16 and 0 and we have to find some L's somewhere and I can definitely see the Buffalo Bills, Kansas City Chiefs and Green Bay as potential L's with them being tough opponents. But I still think we beat New Orleans. I think we beat the Falcons, the Giants and the Chargers leading up to this. And that's why I think we're four and three going into week eight. Going into week eight, we play at Denver and this is a dub. I mean, we just go ahead and start that off. I mean, I think Denver's defense is ascending. I think they have some really good weapons with Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy as long as everybody's healthy. Their running back group is still crazy when healthy, but Drew Locke just isn't it, man. I'm not afraid of Teddy Bridgewater either. So I feel like we have the advantage at quarterback. We have the advantage in offensive line. Overall, our defense is better. And man, I really hope we match up Terry McLaurin versus Ronald Darby that whole game. Wherever Ronald Darby is, Scott Turner, make sure you send Terry McLaurin right against him. Granted, after free agency in the draft, Ronald Darby's actually been reduced 
to maybe even third string corner. Like I think he's the third corner because they already have two better outside corners and a slot corner. So really he's fourth. But if he steps on that field, Terry McLaurin, go eat him. Go get him. And Ryan Fitzpatrick, you make sure you target Ronald Darby. We're going to make sure we show him what he's missing. I mean, I'm really happy we upgraded from Ronald Darby to William Jackson. But still, man, go eat up, Terry. And I definitely see us getting this dub. I think we're just a superior team. I think they're an ascending roster overall. But their QB play with Drew Locke, super inconsistent. Teddy Bridgewater, not a real threat. More so like a bridge quarterback. I know they're trying their hardest to get Aaron Rodgers. And there's a reason for it. I see us getting this dub and heading into our bye week, week nine five and three and just to briefly discuss the bye week we have at week nine which is kind of perfect we play eight games take a break come back and play nine more i mean that's great right there because they could have hated and gave us like a week five bye and then you play four games then you take a week off and then now you got to play the rest of your 13 like no please please no thank goodness so i like the week nine by week right in the middle i think that's kind of perfect that's as good as it gets thank you nfl for not hating on us as far as that goes and plus, that gives us an entire two weeks to prepare for our next opponent, Tampa Bay. The revenge game. Week 10 off the bye week. With our record currently being 5-3, and three, I see us going to 6-3 and three and beating Tampa Bay in Landover, Maryland. This is our rematch. This is our revenge. We lost to them in Landover, Maryland, but our defensive line had arguably one of their worst games of the season. Like they just weren't ready. Chase Young didn't have a great game at all. Deron Payne was honestly like the only one truly stepping up in that game consistently as far as the defensive line goes. And that's one of our strengths. But now we've improved that linebacker with Jamin Davis, potentially Shaka Tony, who may be finally by week 10 ready to step up and have a more prominent role in the defense. Hopefully as a Sam line linebacker and a situational pass rusher so i'm really excited about how this team is gonna look as we get deeper into the schedule because a lot of teams again like the buffalo bills don't really have any major changes so like what you see in them week three is pretty much what you're gonna get the whole season but i feel like our team is gonna be one of those teams that gets better and better as the season goes once we gain more chemistry with the guys and we're gonna have a lot of young players rookies recently signed guys playing very important starting level roles so i feel like we're gonna have some bumps in the road some new moves occasionally some rookie mistakes early on but i feel like by the time we get to week 10 off of the bye week we have two weeks to prepare for them i see us beating tampa bay at home in Landover, Maryland, and taking that dub for the rematch. This time, I feel like it's going to be Ryan Fitzpatrick versus Tom Brady rather than Taylor Heineke versus Tom Brady, but still. And at the same time, speaking of Tom Brady, I mean, he's still a really good quarterback, but he's slowly declining year by year, just slowly but surely. And I feel like this defense is going to give him super problems. I feel like now we finally have a lockdown corner that can lock down Mike Evans or Chris Godwin or Antonio Brown. We finally have William Jackson. Remember, William Jackson shut down Antonio Brown the year that Antonio Brown had like an MVP level season. He was like the best receiver that year, period. And William Jackson shut him down. And we have William Jackson behind this defensive line, behind these linebackers with these safeties around him. Oh yeah, I'm expecting the best out of William Jackson. I'm thinking he's going to have probably the best year of his career with us, especially with how Jack the is going to use him. So remember when we played the Buccaneers, our corners were getting killed out there. Kendall Fuller, Ronald Darby, it was ugly. But now we have William Jackson, an improved defensive line that was already arguably the best last year. And now we have the linebackers that can go out there and cover tight ends. Potentially, Jamin Davis can cover Mike Evans if it's underneath. Cameron Curl, Landon Collins, everybody fully healthy. Oh yeah, I can see us winning this game. Our offense has way more firepower than it did last year when we played them in the playoffs. I mean, Cam Sims and Terry McLaurin were just trying to figure something out. And Taylor Heineke was doing everything he could but it wasn't much he could do. The offensive line was straight, but it's already improved. Our weapons improved. Antonio Gibson is healthy this time. Then you add Jared Patterson to the mix. Oh yeah, I see us getting this dub and leaving week 10, six and three. And man, going into week 11, we play at Carolina, but I was struggling to figure out who to throw some film on. Cause I was like, well, you know, we could do some Teddy. No, they got Sam Darnold now. Oh, we could try some Mike Dick. Ah, uh, he's on the Falcons um we could try christian nah he was hurt most of the time you know what i'm saying so i landed on robbie anderson but 
We play at Carolina week 11. I see us getting this dub. This team isn't really that good. I mean, they're trying to build around Sam Darnold. First of all, I'm not expecting Sam Darnold to ball out. I'm expecting him to be better than what he was since he was on the Jets because the Jets situation around him was horrible. But I'm not expecting him to be that franchise quarterback that the Jets thought they had when they took him. And I think they're honestly one of the weakest opponents we play all season, especially since their quarterback situation is ugly. I mean, I think the Chargers, other than Justin Herbert, I think the Eagles, we play them twice a year. I think maybe the Broncos, even though again, that's just because of their quarterback situation that they're struggling. I think honestly, the Carolina Panthers are one of the top three least difficult opponents. I don't want to call anybody easy because it's the NFL and anything can happen. But I definitely say the Carolina Panthers are one of our top three least threatening teams. And I see us getting this dub and going into week 12, seven and three. Not really much to analyze. They're just a struggling team. We're an ascending team. Again, I don't think Sam Darnold's going to be great. I don't think he's going to be as bad as he was for the Jets. But I also don't think he's going to be good enough to make up for their lack of talent. And who knows if Christian McCaffrey's even going to be healthy enough to play. And then we took Curtis Samuel from him. So Curtis Samuel's about to go against him and ball out. Scott Turner's about to do his thing. I mean, it's just not fair, bro. We have their number. Marty, we took their GM from them. Like, come on now. But yeah, heading into week 12, 7 and 3. Another revenge game. We head into week 12, Monday night football, but in Landover, Maryland against the Seattle Seahawks. And again, this is another revenge game. I'm not going to lie. I see us taking this and going 8 and 3. I mean, we played them pretty well for the circumstances that we had last year i mean even the giants who were struggling last year beat them they're one of the most inconsistent teams in the nfl and i don't feel like they improved that much since last offseason i feel like we improved way more than them specifically just at the quarterback position compared to what we had last year so i see us honestly winning this game on monday night football i think our defense is too stacked our defense is better than theirs literally other than russell wilson everywhere you look at it our offensive line is better than theirs our receiving core overall i mean dk metcalf and, and tyler lockett are great but i don't think they're better than terry mcclaurin curtis samuel deami brown and the other guys we have i think logan thomas is better than whatever tight end they're gonna throw out there greg olsen retired and even so he didn't even play that well last year i think our defense can dominate their offense other than some spectacular russell wilson dk metcalf plays and tyler lockett eaton as the second option I think overall our defense will get the better of their offense. And I think our offense is going to get the better of their defense. I mean, poor Bobby Wagner and Jamal Adams because they're two elite players. But just overall, the defense isn't that great. I'm not sure if Richard Sherman's going to end up going back to Seattle or the 49ers. But either way, I don't think it's going to affect it much. He's kind of a shell of himself anyway. So I'm not too worried about whether Richard Sherman will play for the Seahawks this upcoming season or not. Either way, I see us taking that dub and going into week 13 eight and three then week 13 we play in las vegas and i did this is the perfect storm for a slip up game man again i think we go into this game eight and three but with us playing in las vegas you know that's a huge distraction just like how some away teams struggle playing miami after being in miami the night before and partying and clubbing i mean i think if any team is disciplined enough to avoid that it's us but there's just so many factors i think the fact that we're eight and three we may not take the raiders that seriously because i think by then they won't have a great record i think if we're eight and three i think by the time we get to that game they'll be like four and seven maybe five and six i can definitely see this being the slip up game i'm not gonna lie I mean, everything logically is telling me that we should beat them. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick can outplay Derek Carr. I think our receiving core is easily better than theirs. I think our offensive line is better than theirs. I think our defense is easily better than theirs, top to bottom. But I just see this being a slip up game. And again, I don't necessarily see us going 14 and three. And there has to be some random slip up games in there. And I think honestly, the Raiders would be one of them. I see us going into week 14 eight and four the cowboys man and it's crazy too because we don't play on thanksgiving which is really interesting guess i get to enjoy the entire thanksgiving with my family eat i can take my nap if i want to i don't have to fight sleep to watch our game or anything so that's pretty cool i mean i like playing on thanksgiving i like playing when everybody's watching primetime games and things like that but i'm sleepy after i eat man i, I eat it so we play the cowboys week 14 for the first time that season it's pretty crazy that we play the eagles and the cowboys for the first time so late in the season and i see us winning this game i think we're better than the cowboys again like i said i think the giants are the biggest threat i think the cowboys offense is going to be pretty good especially with Dak back 
I mean, but first of all, who knows if Dak Prescott is going to be 100% what he used to be after a severe leg injury like that. I mean, who knows? And even then, their skill position players have just underperformed mightily. And who knows if their offensive line is going to be healthy by the time we get to week 14. Maybe if we played the Cowboys in the first five weeks, maybe I would think about them possibly beating us. But I think we're just a better team overall. Their defense, even after drafting Mike Parsons and Jabril Cox, adding Keanu Neal and Dan Quinn as their defensive coordinator, I still think their defense is going to end up being one of the worst in the NFL. Their secondary is still tragic. Their defensive line is nothing scary. And again, I don't see their offensive line staying healthy by this point. And they don't have a lot of great depth like we do. If healthy, their offensive line is better than our starting offensive line when everybody's healthy. But if there are injuries, I trust our bench guys, our depth guys way more than I trust theirs. And you got to factor injuries. I just don't necessarily see the Cowboys being perfectly healthy by the time we get to week 14. I don't wish injuries on them, but just being realistic and based off of what we saw last year, even if I'm assuming Dak Prescott is fully healthy by the time we get to week 14, I just don't see their entire offensive line being that way. And our defense, again, is going to be top three, arguably the best in the NFL. And I see us shutting down the Cowboys. It may not be as embarrassing as last year on Thanksgiving because they had Andy Dalton instead of Dak Prescott, but I definitely see us going crazy against the Cowboys in Landover, Maryland, week 14, and being nine and four going into week 15. Then week 15, we play Philly in Philadelphia. It's at Philly, and I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. I think the Eagles will be the bottom of the division just flat out. I think the Giants are our biggest competition. I think the Cowboys, even though a lot of players underperform, even though the coaching staff isn't that great, I think they're still just too talented to just be completely trash. But the Eagles, even after drafting Devonta Smith, I've never been high on Jalen Hurts like a lot of other people have been. And even after that one game he had against the Saints where he balled out, you can see that NFL defense has started to catch on and shut him down a little bit. Not completely shut him down, but I don't think Jalen Hurts is all of that like a lot of people do. And I just think the Eagles overall with their cap space situation, they're just going to be the bottom of this division for maybe the next two, three years. I'm not going to lie. And I definitely see us getting this dub. Even though it's in Philly, I see us getting this dub. I mean, it's just the Eagles are struggle right now. I'm not going to lie. And I see us going into week 16, 10 and 4 easily after beating the Eagles, man. Then we play the Cowboys again twice within a three-week span. Sunday night football, week 16 in Dallas. And I could definitely see this being one of those slip-up games. And division games are tough. I think other than the Eagles, we're just gonna split with the Giants and the Cowboys because they're really talented teams. And when you're playing in a division, it doesn't matter how terrible the team is, how great a team is. It's usually somewhat of a tough matchup. They know you better than any other opponent on your schedule. And they're literally drafting and building their team to beat you. Like you, when you're drafting, when you're adding guys through free agency, when you're constructing your team, the first priority is to be able to beat everybody in your division. Then after that, you try to, you know, work on things to be able to beat other guys. But like division teams are literally designed to beat their division rivals. And even though I feel like we're definitely better than the Cowboys, even though I feel like we're going to win this division, I still see us taking this L against the Cowboys. I'm not going to lie. Week 16 in Dallas as well. Sunday night football. I see us being 10 and five heading into week 17. And then we play the Eagles again. Week 17 in Landover this time. And we play the Eagles twice within three weeks, just like we played the Dallas Cowboys twice within three weeks. I mean, it's literally Cowboys, Eagles, Cowboys, Eagles, which is really weird. I'm not sure how rare that is, but that's pretty crazy that we just go Cowboys, Eagles, Cowboys, Eagles. And then the last game of the season is against the Giants. So we play five division rivals to end the season. That's pretty crazy. But sticking the week 17 against the Eagles, again, I see us sweeping them. They're just, they're not good, man. I mean, unless we just have one of those slip up games, unless Unless we just have such a great record that we're already sitting starters maybe they win but the eagles are it's ugly for them man i mean it's really dark they don't really have a good win now team and with their salary cap situation and with me not even trusting their coaching staff they don't have a really bright future either i mean like i said earlier i'm not as high on jalen hurst as a lot of people are like i said we're gonna be one of those teams i would say we're definitely one of those top five teams in the nfl that's just gonna get better and better every week 
Again, there are teams like the Kansas City Chiefs, like the Bills, like the Buccaneers, that even though they're great, I don't necessarily see them getting better and better each week. I think we're going to definitely be one of those top five teams, maybe even top three, where you can noticeably see that we're getting better and better each week with this defense and this offense, gaining chemistry, everybody just getting better. Again, we have a lot of high impact rookies and recently added free agents that are going to get meaningful snaps and starting level opportunities and it may just not gel well in the beginning of the season. And I feel like by the end of the season, we're going to be clicking on all cylinders. And I see a sweep in the Eagles, plain and simple. It sounds like most of my analysis was more so talking about our team. Because again, it's just not really much to analyze with the Eagles. I just think they're just flat out not good. Maybe they surprised me. I don't know. But I think they're going to be the bottom of this division for like the next two, three years. I think the Giants are honestly our biggest competition. I feel like the Cowboys are always going to be in the mix. But their defense is just too bad to really be that relevant right now but we'll see but yeah man heading into the final week of the season the first week 18 in nfl history i see us being 11 and 5 heading into week 18 we play the giants in new york in new jersey technically and as i alluded to earlier briefly i feel like we split with the cowboys and the giants we already beat the giants week two in landover maryland i think they beat us in new york well technically in new jersey again and honestly i feel like by then we'll already just have the division shirt up i mean maybe we can be playing for a better seating potentially but i think by the time we get the week 18 we'll already know that we've won the division and that we're at least the fourth seed in the playoffs i see us going into this game the giants possibly fighting to get a wild card spot one of those last three spots of the non-division winners so they'll probably have more to play for we'll have far less to play for we may even sit some starters if we feel like it's not worth it and we want to make sure we're as healthy as possible going into the playoffs who knows maybe ron rivera is just one of those guys that doesn't like to sit starters we'll see but either way i see us splitting with them even if we play our starters i think the giants is just a little too talented to sweep them you know what i'm saying i think we're the better team and i think overall if you add up our scores between both games we'll have more points than they do, but I think we'll split with them. I think we'll catch them at home and they'll catch us at home. And I think we end the season, the first time that there's been 17 regular season games in a season, 11 and six. And I'm excited, man. I think it's a very realistic schedule prediction. And yes, sir, there you go. The Burgundy and Gold, the first NFL season in history with a 17 game regular season, 18 weeks with one bye week. Thank goodness our bye week is in the middle, man. Oh, whoo, I'm super. That's one of my favorite parts of this schedule. That was one of the things I was most nervous about leading up to this schedule reveal. When was our bye week? And I'm so happy our bye week's right in the middle. I think that helps us achieve that 11 and 6 goal that I think we can realistically accomplish. I think we are good enough to go 11 and 6. It all depends on how consistent and explosive our offense can be. Most notably, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Can Ryan Fitzpatrick stay healthy? Can Ryan Fitzpatrick repeat what he did for the Dolphins last year, which was probably his best season of his career? And he's playing on the best team he's ever played on as far as like the weapons around him and his defense they can get him the ball back as much as possible and as soon as possible. I think we're putting Ryan Fitzpatrick in position to have his best year of his career. But Ryan Fitzpatrick still isn't Pat Mahomes, Tom Brady in his prime, or even like Josh Allen, maybe even Justin Herbert, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, all of these great quarterbacks that we play. But the team around them, I feel like is great. I feel like outside of the quarterback, we have a top three, top five roster in the NFL. So I can definitely see us going 11 and six as long as Ryan Fitzpatrick doesn't sell us. I think he will have some games where he'll have multiple interceptions and we'll probably lose some games we have no business losing. But we may also win some games where we're the dramatic underdog. I mean, I would not be dramatically surprised if we beat Kansas City just off of the fact that Ryan Fitzpatrick can just have one of those great four touchdown, no interception games. And our defense is going to be straight dominance. I definitely see us having a top three defense, arguably the best defense in the NFL. I think the Buccaneers are the only team that truly rivals us defensively, top to bottom. But we will have the best defensive line. Our linebacker core is ascending. Our DB group is definitely ascending. So I'm really excited about this upcoming season. Again, I see us going 11 and six. That's a great second year for Ron Rivera, going from a two and 14 team to a seven and nine, barely winning the division. I mean, crawling in, honestly, nobody last year deserved to win that division. And then going 11 and six with this second year coaching. Oh yeah, 
Ron Rivera is that dude, and I can see this realistically happening. Again, I emphasize realistic, because honestly, I mean, I think the sky's the limit. If Ryan Fitzpatrick gives us his best every game, which is not very realistic, but say he does, the team around him, these skill position players, this offensive line, this defense, we can honestly go 13 and three as a ceiling. But I just think being as realistic as possible, I think we go 11 and six. Cause again, I think our team is too talented. I think our team is, is too well coached. I think we definitely easily have the best coaching staff in the NFC East. And just imagine if we get something out of guys like Samus Reyes in his rookie season this year. Potentially, if he's able to work on all of the mental and technique parts of being a tight end, he literally can be a better blocking, more athletic Jimmy Graham. Just imagine him getting added to the equation. I really think our ceiling could be 13 and three, but again, I think our realistic goal is to go 11 and six. But yeah, man, definitely get in the comment section and let me know how you feel about this prediction. Do you agree 11 and six? Who do you feel like will beat? Who do you feel like we'll lose to? What are your record predictions? Definitely get in the comment section and give those to me, please. I will be in the comment section reading them. I want to see your floor. I want to see worst case scenario, what our record prediction could be. I want to see your ceiling. What do you think if everything just goes perfectly well, where will we go? Do you see us winning a division? Do you see us being the first NFC East back-to-back -back division champs in like, what, 20 years or something like that since like the Eagles did it? It's been a long time. I think it's been at least 12 or something like that. Do you see us accomplishing that? Just definitely get in the comment section and let me know your predictions for this schedule. And you can even go week by week and tell me win loss, win loss or whatever and things like that. I will be in the comment section reading them, may not get a chance to reply to all of them, but I will be looking at all of them. Best believe that. And then of course, man, please like this video if you liked it. If you learned anything, please subscribe. If you haven't, hit the bell next to the description button so you get a notification every time I release an informative and opinionated video like this one. And definitely stay tuned for all of the film sessions I'm doing on every pick from this past draft class, including undrafted free agent running back Jared Patterson. And also stay tuned for all of the constant live streams every Friday and every Sunday. And as always, man, I really appreciate all of the support big time, man. Big shouts out to all of y'all, man. I really appreciate all y'all. I appreciate all of my sponsors, especially the Pro Bowl sponsors. Name you see scrolling on the screen right now, man. I really appreciate all y'all. I'll catch y'all later, man. I'm out.